Hello and welcome to episode 66 of our SAP on Azure video podcast. Today is November 4th and together with Robert and Goran, we're here to talk about anything related to SAP and Microsoft. Hello, everyone. Hello. So helping customers get started with SAP on Azure is something that we have talked about a few times in, in previous episodes. So especially the enterprise scale for SAP is an area where we have um, provided a lot of content for customers to actually get started. Today, um, Prasad and Andrew are here to share the latest news with us and, and walk us through um, what we have available um, on our websites. But as always, before we go there, we'll quickly take a look at some of the news um, from this week. And I actually want to start with an announcement um, that just happened two days ago. So Microsoft Viva is now general available. So uh, if you go to Teams, you can just um, add the Viva app and Viva basically helps us in the employee experience or as the, uh, the exploit, ex employee experience platform that um, allows you to get some more insights in, in what's happening in your, your company. There, there are um, four different areas of the Viva suite, uh, suite um, that uh, yeah, help you in, in, in different areas um, and, and, and guide you through the um, uh, employee experience. So there's um, Viva connections to really help the um, interaction between um, employees within a company. There's Viva Insights, which is actually pretty cool. Um, that um, gives you some some yeah insights into how are you doing your your, your work. Um, you can get insights at like so many meetings. You're spending so much time in in, in meetings, or um, you you have not focused time. So maybe you should set something up like that. So it's it's pretty a pretty interesting um, story there with Viva Topics. Um, so if you're looking for um, some colleagues um, that, that are experts in some areas, or if you need to dive into certain um, areas where you need additional um, information, then um, topics helps you there. And then there's Viva Learning, which is basically um, the, the place to access um, e-learning resources. Um, and there, there, there is some content obviously from, from, from Microsoft, but I think what is also really interesting is um, that we are announcing um, the partner integrations. So as of today already, we, we have partners like Pluralsight, Workday, Qualtrics, um, that um, have already um, integrations and and um, uh, yeah, integrate in the in the whole um, Viva platform. And obviously, SAP. Um, so not only Qualtrics, but but also SAP with SAP Success Factors, Success Factors Learning, is now also part of um, of Microsoft Viva. So basically, what this allows you to do is if you um, are in Teams, if you're starting Viva, if you're looking for um, learning content, then um, you can also see here the content from um, Success Factors Learning. And I think that, that's really um, powerful because obviously we, we are doing a lot of Success Factors Learning content and um, a, a lot of customers are using um, Success Factors Learning in this, in this regard. And now with the integration in, in Viva, this content is also extremely easily accessible um, for, for the employees. Um, speaking of the SAP and Teams integration, um, we, we, we talked about this um, before, but I just want to highlight this again. So SAP Sales Cloud um, is now also integrated um, in, um, in, in, in Teams. There is an app, so if you go again to the Teams App Store, you can access the SAP Sales Cloud app there. Um, there, there are a few things that you need to um, configure, but then um, you have this, this experience that you can, um, first of all, schedule meetings, obviously, from Sales Cloud, Teams meetings. But then the, the cool thing is once you are in the Teams meeting, then from the, the meeting there, you have access to your SAP Sales Cloud environment. So you can um, see the notes that you, that you took there. You can even change um, some status there. So it's a really nice integration of um, Sales Cloud um, with, with Teams. Good. Then, obviously, this um, week there's one central thing that that just happened um, the last two days, and that is um, Microsoft Ignite. Um, for for those of you who've um, missed the the live event, um, there are a lot of recordings already available. Obviously, here the the the, the opening keynote is already there, um, where where Satya talked about Microsoft Cloud, um, different topics, and and we'll go into some of them in 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 a second. But if you just want to get a, um, a summary, basically, then um, there's a, 
I don't know, 20 minutes um, presentation by, by Satya, followed by um, a few others. Uh, Scott Guthrie is also talking there. Um, Charles Lamala. Uh, La, La, <laughs> oh, now I'm, I can't remember his, we'll go to his last name in a second from, from the Power Platform. Um, is is also talking there. So um, it's a it, overall. I think the initial keynote was like two hours or three hours or something like that. But you can definitely um, pick some of the sections there, and and watch some of the announcements. If you don't want to watch them, um, as last year there's or as beginning of the year. So so if you might remember this is the second ignite. We had now two ignites this this year. Um, this is now the fall ignite, and um, like in the um, spring ignite, we have a book of news where you can find a summary of most or all the announcements. There, there's a long um, table of content. There, there are really some some really cool things that uh, were happening or that were announced. So a lot of infrastructure topics, um, obviously, but then also in the area of mixed reality, um, Microsoft Loop. Um, uh, context, um, IQ, there, there were some really interesting things. And instead of now going through all these um, um, Microsoft only topics, um, there are a few things that are where, where we explicitly mention also SAP. So um, you, you might be aware of the Azure Migration and Modernization Program. So basically where we help in general customers to migrate their um, on-premises estate into Azure and help to modernize um, the infrastructure. Um, and here for, for SAP, we, we have an updated um, offering basically where we help customers to move their SAP environments um, into Azure. Um, then if we go beyond the, the more infrastructure specific topics, and, and this is from an integration perspective, I think really cool. And um, actually, if you look at the, the, the keynote from, from Satya, um, there's, there's also a quick demo there. Um, it's the, the integration of Microsoft Loop um, in Teams um, in combination with third party tools like Jira, Zoho and, and SAP. So basically the idea is um, when you're when you're writing something in Teams in this um, new component loop, then um, um, Microsoft or we are, we're trying to get um, information from the, the context that uh, that you're currently in. And this context cannot only be, um, I don't know, an opportunity in your dynamic system or, or documents that you have stored in OneDrive or um, colleagues that are part of your Azure Active Directory or something like that. But it's also it can also apparently um, get information from the SAP system. So if you look, if you watch the the recording, it's it's just like 30 seconds or so, but it's a it's a I, I think it really shows in a nice way the, the potential of um, how these different components, um, especially this here, this context IQ, um, how this can pull in information from different sources that you are um, working with and, and, and really bringing this um, nicely together. Um, I think there was one other thing. Uh, let me quickly check. OK, th ah, yeah, th this is, I think, um, in, in, in general, the, uh, the the Teams integration where we talked about the SAP Sales Cloud and uh, the integration there. And I think, oh yeah, and here's the, um, the, the Viva announcement that we also um, briefly covered. So. These are just the the SAP related topics. Again, there there's a long long list of um, additional features. Um, just take some time and read through it. Um, I, I'm sure there's there's a lot of um, very interesting content there. And some of the links here. Um, so so you can see here's the summary, but there's always um, uh, here um, a, a learn more link. And some of these links, um, for example, go to uh, the Microsoft Graph. Um, the Microsoft Graph is basically your entry point into a Microsoft 365. So if you want to um, query information from the Azure Active Directory or when you want to look up documents in um, in your OneDrive or on, on Exchange, um, the, the, the graph is the central entry point. And now what we're doing there is um, we, we're um, having these connectors that allow you to also connect to other um, data sources. So, for example, there, there's um, a connector in preview right now for ServiceNow or for the Confluence Cloud or for um, Jira. So, so basically the idea um, is that you have the, the, the graph is the entry point, but you're not only able to access information um, from the Microsoft ecosystem, but, but you're also able to connect 
um, information from yeah, ServiceNow, Salesforce and, and, and other data sources. And obviously, if you then look at um, the graph being the, the central entry, po entry point to search and, and um, discover information that is relevant to you, then I think this, this can become really, really powerful if, if we really get more and more of these connectors that um, bring the data into um, the Microsoft Graph. Another announcement, and obviously I need to um, highlight the Power Platform, and here we go, Charles Lamana, that's that's his name. Uh, sorry for butchering it the, the first time. Um, there were tons of announcements for the Power Platform and um, some some really, really cool things. And, and for me, that highlighted again um, that it's not only about having these um, low-code, no-code solutions there, but it's also all the investments that, that we are currently putting into the Power Platform that, that our customers and partners can easily benef benefit from. I think that's for me really, really amazing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we, we talked about the SAP integration, obviously, but there's so much going on beyond the SAP integration. There's there are updates with Power Virtual Agents. There's a nice functionality now that you can, while you create your, um, your local solution here, for example, your Power Automate Flow, you can interact with other makers and they can provide comments on, on the flow. So um, it, it's really coming all here together. Or when we, um, yeah, there, there's a new licensing with pay as you go. Um, there's a process mining. So um, if you want to optimize um, um, certain workflows or steps that you have in your company, that first of all, um, with this process mining, you can detect and, and, and record basically what's happening. And then um, you can also get recommendations of how we can improve um, your workflows there. Um, yeah, data insight, but there's one thing that I think is also really important that, and that's still this fusion team development. Um, so um, I think one thing that I really like about the Power Platform is that it's not only addressing the low code, the, 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 um, the maker basically, but it really from the very beginning thought that, well, how can we bring the pro developer together with the with the um, maker, with the business user. So um, when we talk about um, using um, services on Azure, an API management integration, or um, maybe you have an Azure function, or when you look at um, uh, integration with GitHub or something like that, um, there, there are a lot of things where, where the Power Platform team is focusing on to really make sure that um, these two uh, teams or these different teams um, can come um, together and really work together. And I think, again, looking at SAP, that that's the same story. There we also have these different teams where we have the SAP experts that really know how a BAP works and how to work with the SAP system. And in this context, we're, we're now bringing the, the SAP experts together with the with the makers so they can um, more easily build um, yeah, low-code applications. Um, moving on, um, again, for, for the Power Platform, if you want to get started, there's a really nice adoption um, area for the Power Platform. So basically, how do I get started? How do I engage with my organization with lots of content, lots of links? Um, how do I build champions and set up a secure environment? So, so really, if you, if you think, if I could convince you that the Power Platform is a great thing to start in the SAP area, then um, this is a nice way to, to really get started and to also set it up in your, in your organization. Okay, then um, 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 a new announcement um, or a an, an, an next event. So we are jumping from event to event. I Ignite is over, but um, the next um, event is already coming. Goran, I think um, you found the Azure Infrastructure as a Service yeah, Day. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 basically so basically back, back from, from your um, high level clouds to the low level <laughs> integration of infrastructure as a service. Uh, interesting in when actually one day or two hours, what I can say, free event, you know, talking about the uh, Azure infrastructure, uh, IIS days. Um, basically, there would be a lot of uh, demos and best practices, um, deep dive context uh, related to storage, networking and, and uh, <clears throat> computer. I mean, this is the backbone for the SAP infrastructure as a service, definitely. Uh, and uh, warmly, warmly, I would just encourage people. It's just a two hours, so um, uh, definitely there would be a, a lot of interesting stuff. It's on uh, November 17th, so basically, yeah, there is enough time. Yeah, to register, you will not miss it. Yeah. 
And uh, I would say another interesting part related to the infrastructure service, I'm always kind of <laughs> amazed how the stuff, uh, something called Azure a a v AVS, in short, Azure VMware Solution. So basically, I was also a bit puzzled, you know, to see um, such a stuff uh, coming to Azure. VMware is a generally really popular virtualization platforms on the on-premises world. Many, many customers are having it, even, even the SAP customers. Uh, so basically, those SAP and non-SAP customers are really asking uh, uh, Microsoft to offer uh, VMware uh, inf virtualization as a service, so to say, because kind of tendencies, they uh, people do not want to manage it by themselves, but they would love to use the uh, interfaces, APIs, uh, management console of the existing VMware because. Typically, they would they would also do a lot of scripting around the uh, uh, VMware, for example, using PowerShell or the CLI, and they would just love to continue in that way. So interesting that this is now we have a kind of uh, um, general availability of the a AVS in uh, German West Central. It's interesting. Uh, I, I would expect, of course, those would be expanded. Um, we don't have anything so far in the SAP context. Uh, at the moment, right? But it's just interesting to see the tendency, um, how, how the Microsoft is expanding in all the direction, right? So let's see how it will develop. Uh, I think Prasad, you were also, uh, you were mentioning, yeah, you're also working in this area, right? So, yes, yes. Uh, so you can also, uh, give some update from your side. It would be also yeah, <laughs> from also the guest. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Jordan and Holger. Uh, first of all, thank you uh, so much for giving me uh, this opportunity and great to be here. Uh, my name is Prasad Gandham and I am a principal program manager focusing on technical strategy from customer success unit on SAP and Azure VMware solutions. Yes, um, Azure VMware solutions is definitely a Holger was sharing earlier. Uh, we have multiple regions already released. And we are working very hard for the other ones as well as the demand uh, arises. Uh, what, what we did is that we are building a enterprise scale for SAP and AVS. We actually released AVS last month. Uh, basically that provides that prescriptive guidance as in referenced architecture and referenced implementation is also being released. Uh, let me quickly show all of you that page as well that way. Give me a second. I mean, just just to to introduce, I, I think um, the or we will talk. You, you you will talk about the enterprise scale, what it is, and uh, what yes. you can do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and yeah. Okay, uh, we'll definitely get. Uh, should I say that? Oh, sorry. Yeah, maybe quickly <laughs> squi switch to Andrew. Yeah, just uh, yeah. Uh, for the uh, beginning introduction. Sure. Yeah, this is a a great segue, I think. So you know, a lot going on in the enterprise scale uh, space. So. Let's get right into it. So to introduce myself, my name is Andrew Guild. I am the business consumption architect for SAP Azure here at Microsoft. So thank you for having me on. We're excited to talk to you about enterprise scale in general. Uh, so I'm joined by Prasad, who uh, is my technical strategy counterpart and has already partially introduced himself. So we can skip a bit yeah. of that. <laughs> but uh, you know, we're we're here. We're very excited to talk to you about a new capability that we're introducing this month, November, and uh, and just to just to get right into it, you know, obviously a lot of work's gone into this in Prasad. I think there's uh, there's plenty of grounds for celebration this month as a result, not just Diwali, uh, but you know, a lot of time and energy has gone into this by the team. So really excited for you to tell everyone a bit about why this is so special and how it's going to help our customers. Yep. Thank you, thank you, Andrew. Uh, first of all, happy Diwali to all of you as uh, well. Yes. Yeah, yeah, great. <laughs> Yeah, so enterprise scale for SAP and Azure uh, is a prescribed guidance. Uh, as Holger mentioned, we did talk about this uh, in the past as well. Uh, basically, it is provides that referenced architecture and automation from Microsoft top subject matter experts. And it is designed to help the customers deploy a sustainable and scalable solution when migrating or optimizing their SAP and Azure environments. Either case, it is a definitely great fit. What we have done is that building on the massive success we had on the enterprise scale for landing zone, and we are reiterating on that. So we created enterprise scale for SAP component for Azure on SAP on Azure customers. 
think of this as like a foundation for your house uh, where you are trying to build a home, uh, particularly when foundation of your house, uh, an example how city utilizes such as water, gas, electricity are accessible before a new home is constructed. In this context, enterprise scale for landing zone and enterprise scale for SAP is a combination of that where network identity access management policies monitoring all our shared utility services that must readily available to help streamline the application migration process before it even begins uh, that's sorry go ahead no, no sorry no, no, no. i was just not here uh, great, great. Uh, one important question, why most of the customers or anybody would love to know why enterprise scale for SAP is special. Basically, we tried taking away few uh, things for away from the customers so that the migration is so easy and also it actually becomes a production ready uh, deployment for them. One is the taking away the reducing the architectural complexity by providing the recommendations and considerations. So customers doesn't have to look for Oh, what should I, how should I configure my network? How should I plan for my monitoring and identity and all that? So that is we are bringing together as an end-to-end -end scenario. And also we providing an approach utilizing the referenced implementation, which is a mouthful word, but which is in general, like which is a automation so that customers can get started at scale and speed. Uh, we had scenarios where customers reached out to us asking, hey, I need to deploy enterprise scale for uh, I need to be on SAP on Azure in two weeks. That is a scale and time bound. We were able to achieve those things as well using the automation at scale. And the final one, in my opinion, compliance and security is such a critical piece for every organization. Enterprise scale for SAP brings all that as well together uh, part of this. Okay. Yeah. So I think just just to reiterate um, what you said, or just to get some some clarity, the the enterprise scale itself is something that we have for Azure in general. So if I if even if I don't care about SAP, we have some um, some documentation, some information that helps customers to get started with Azure. Now, if I am an SAP customer, we have a special implementation or or a special section where we explicitly talk about. The, the things that make running SAP on Azure so special so that yes. um, I don't need to find myself. So I have a great virtual machine. I have great network documentation, but I don't know how does this work in the context of SAP? And that's exactly what the enterprise scale for SAP does, right? Exactly. And to answer that question in a, I have a beautiful side as well. I'll switch back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, that's exactly which we are, uh, which you just explained over is that uh, customers can get started 50% they get started that they get that base started on top of it it's a branch out of it we are building the 30 percent enterprise scale for sap so it is nothing uh, new or uh, kind of it is actually customers can adopt it as is who's already mm -hmm. using and utilizing these best practices fantastic yeah, yeah. and we are also yeah. not sorry Andrew. Andrew. And we are not reinventing the wheel. So if something is already documented in the general section in this 50%, we'll just um, leverage that and um, let customers go this this use this flow basically. That we yes. Have yeah. Cool. It's been creating that plumbing, especially for SAP workload mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from out of that. Yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah. And talking about flow and sort of how this incorporates, I, I, in case there's you know. Uh, any sort of confusion how this might fit in with some of the other talk about, you know, we at Microsoft talk about cloud adoption framework a lot, CAF. Uh, Prasad, you know, it may help the audience to, to know sort of how this fits in there, but also if for an SAP customer is not yet an SAP on Azure customer, maybe where this fits into the SAP equivalent of you know, discover, prepare, migrate, run, innovate, you know, where does this fit in there? Yeah, another great question. Actually, to put it in the terms, uh, many future SAP on Azure customers may understand enterprise scale for SAP on Azure is something that a customer would start to leverage, in my opinion, part of the prepare migration planning activities. Because mm -hmm. that's where you're actually getting into the door and that is where you're going to get these benefits out of all these recommendations. From Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework standpoint, customers would start to leverage that as part of the plan phase and stage of Cloud Adoption Framework. In either case, in either case, 
customers would continue to leverage the benefit of automation, acceleration, and scalability using enterprise okay. scale for SAP. One small diagram, which actually we put together, kind of provide that clarity as well to the customers and partners is definitely here, which we are talking part of the prepare. We're saying this is where we are gonna, uh, which actually talks in our SAP language, discover, prepare, migrate. This is exactly where we are introducing this one. So for me, this is really, really fantastic because we are not only talking about technology, right? We, we, we're not only saying, look, here are the tools, go use it, but we are already helping the customers even before that, even before they um, yeah, start the Azure portal or, or, or use um, the software update manager or run database migration option. We, we already help them in the, in the first step to say, look, uh, before you get started, these are the things that you should take care of. These are the things that you should consider. Here are some best practices that we know from from other customers, from partners, from Microsoft Digital. Really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm also working a lot with the customers, and uh, it's always the question: Where shall I start? You know, <laughs> and what? Should, I mean, because they 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 know there is some security. Okay, they need to prepare something, but it's a lot of puzzles, you know. And they really always ask for the kind of structured approach, right? Uh, what to do, when to do, and I mean, this is really a, a, a beautiful guidelines, you know, I, uh, ordered in, a, I mean, uh, um, arranged in a proper order, so to say, right? And especially that acceleration part, it's always, uh, I mean, interesting for them, you know, how to also use it, automation to deploy it, as you mentioned, uh, I need in a two weeks to, I yeah. mean, migrate and do something, right? Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Now it's hundred percent. Yeah, and a lot of energy has gone into really making sure all the bases are covered here and we're getting into the details about how to make this go as seamlessly as possible. So, I, Prasad, I think this is a great opportunity for us to maybe get into a little bit more of the detail about what's under the hood here and uh, even some content that some of the more technical audience members might be interested in. Yeah, no, I think another great ask, definitely. And forgotten clearly mentioned actually that puzzles and putting together the, all the puzzles together by putting them together, we are providing that fastest path for production ready. Uh, and also we are kind of talking through those. Actually, we have the public documentation ready, uh, which is enterprise scale for SAP and Azure. If you ping it or Google it, you will definitely get here. So the way we structured that uh, is customers would have a chance to go through the design, guide, design guidelines and look at the entire architecture as a holistic view make the trade-offs like okay does this work for my environment does it not work for my environment that is what we are actually kind of opening creating that open ended questions to the customers and which will go through a couple of critical design areas of how we actually approach with the customers and partners also utilize this heavily so the design guidelines which we are talking about here is we talk about identity and we go into how do you plan for your disaster recovery and finally we are getting that acceleration move faster using the automation and DevOps, which I will definitely cover in a couple of minutes later. So let's actually look at the architecture itself. Uh, what we have tried doing in this architecture is that when some, when any customer or partner looks at this, we are bringing that holistic view as talking about, okay, how do I plan for my identity? How do I plan for my monitoring? How do I plan for my networking? All these areas we are bringing through our enterprise scale landing zone, where this actually all comes from our shared utilities, which I mentioned in the beginning. The shared utilities all come from there. As a be best recommendation and consideration, what we are providing is utilizing that hub and spoke so that all your customers might have global reach, express route, or VNet, VVAN, everything that hub and spoke. And finally, the most important piece which we are targeting to is that how do you plan for your SAP landing zones? In the landing zones, automation does the same thing what you're seeing here. When customers can deploy this landing zone, create the virtual network, create the infrastructure, and use our configuration as a code using Ansible SAP application deployment as well. Uh, this is exactly where what we are trying to show in this and ANF integration, Azure NetApp files, but customers can, as I mentioned, they have an option to choose, pick and choose what is best for my environment. And this kind of open-ended recommendations we are bringing together for the customers. With that being said, let me actually uh, kind of jump into 
what how we start this is we'll have an introduction session with the customers and partners this might be partner might be delivering it in the initial section we kind of go through this architecture then we kind of get into the details that brainstorming session or working session with the customers where we quickly jump and talk about these critical design areas and in this scenario here i will be definitely take an opportunity to talk about a couple of design areas and others will definitely fit in and as we sit with the customers and partners more and more so what we have done is we actually built this uh, template uh, kind of how we designed this template is that when i go to my customers not only we provide the documentation we kind of created as a working session on the mm -hmm. left we are talking about hey, these are all the recommendations we are providing it to you and on the right uh, what we have done is that okay how is customers environment today it is set up by listening to the customer by listening to the partner what we provide is okay as a customer success um, customer solution architect or a partner would get to that conclusion okay this might be the best fit for my customer so let me walk all of you through a identity section, uh, which is identity network are very close to me. <laughs> so let me talk through both of them. Here, identity, we are providing, okay, customers or partners, please use it role-based access control to manage your access and provide access to the resources. And also we talk about providing a single, uh, single sign-on using SSO or providing what would be the key vault and all that recommendations. This we will talk to the customer. Then on the left side, when I sit with the customers, I would say, uh, dear customer, do you have Azure AD today integrated with SSO? If not, that's okay. Then we'll uh, get into the details of what else is there. Do we have SAP as an application integrated with an SSO? Yes or no, then customers might say, hey, we have third party application integrated. Based on that, we come to a conclusion where customers can make the trade off and saying that, yeah, this is what we are going to do it. Okay, now you have given us that best practices. Let us change our course of direction. Okay, we will we'll go ahead with this approach. That is what we provide to them in the design decision states. We get into a lot more details because of the time crunch. I'm just kind of talking through one or two critical area design areas here. Another one, I'm just quickly walking through the same flow for networking because such an important pillar is network. Because once we have the network and that plumbing set up properly, uh, we are actually set for a success and production ready environment. So that's why I quickly want to spend time here as well, where we are talking about four different sections. Part of our recommendations, we are talking about connectivity topology, and also we kind of end with that, how the name resolution, DNS, and everything works together. On the right, customers come back and say, hey, we need a throughput here, and this is a throughput we expect, and this is the current load on our network. These are our Active Directory DNS forwarders are set. We don't want to expose these firewall rules. All that good details, we kind of listen and provide the recommendations for their different different regions and come back and say that, okay, this Azure native service could be a best option here or customer has something else. We kind of work with them and provide that guidance to the customers as a solution architect, as a partner. So that's exactly what we are trying to bring together. And uh, I'll pause there and talk about a few, few more in a couple of minutes about the automation, which is very, very close to my heart. <laughs> oh, cool. That, that, that's great. Cool. And I think yeah. the, the, the nice thing is that, that um, you're not only talking about the network configuration, but as you said, you're starting with the identity. You're, you're, you're talking about and um, with the customers about um, yeah, what permissions do they need? Uh, what roles do they need to to set it up? I I really think that's that's great. One one question though, um, these uh, these questions that you have there, is this just Microsoft internal? Is this something that partners can use? Is this something that customers can do to to um, do a self evaluation or or who is the the audience for these questions? It is meant for everybody. Um, okay. It could be used for our solution architect. That's where we are actually getting it to be released, mm -hmm. uh, where oh, it can yeah. be used by the partners and customers as well. Yeah, it yeah. is not publicly available as of today. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon, I won't be okay. able to get the date. Pretty soon, it is available in our public document. Yeah, so you because, heard first here on the podcast. <laughs> nice. Yes, yes, yes. This is our first time. Yeah, because I saw a nice summary and then a lot of links, surely to Microsoft or SAP documentation, to SAP notes. Yes. And then, so 
I mean that that that's a nice to have on the one place, right? You don't have to le learn from. Okay, so yeah, basically what great. we tried avoiding is that customer doesn't need to go back to again web page and come back. We kind of summarize that as a bullet point. When customer, this is exactly what happened. Like twenty or fifty plus customers, when we go there, we just tell them, okay, then we open this PowerPoint, and it becomes such an energy discussion for the customers, yeah. like because these are open-ended questions, and customers might come back, oh, we never thought about that. <laughs> That's great, and I think this we never thought about that. I think that's so crucial that you, with your background, with all the expertise that that you have from from multiple customer approaches, that you can ask the customer these questions, and then they start thinking, "Oh, right, I have these other th systems that I need to take care." Of. That's really great. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, <clears throat> automation is also close to my heart as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, and I think of my dear colleagues, Morgan, Kimo, they definitely yeah. have uh, uh, spoke about this in a length. And actually, yeah. we recently has done a huge workshop. And the Holger, thank you for joining us there. And having you there was a pleasure or the level up. Uh, so the same thing is one of the pillars here is in our documentation. Again, we go through the presentation and we have a implementation workshop, part of the presentation as well. <laughs> That's where we spend two, three hours with the customer and come back and look at this automation <clears throat> as well. Uh, and we trying to incorporate more and more. Uh, this is something we have so many customers actually implemented and uh, we have our internal teams also trained uh, where this brings all these things together where we recent, uh, just now I spoke about hub and spoke model where customers can come back here and it kind of provides that holistic view as an end user, I will start here, get my GitHub, and I will basically setting up my hub. First thing, setting up using the Terraform, we build this infrastructure. From the deployer, we are actually getting into bits of Terraform plus Ansible as a code, where we are actually giving that production ready system to the customers. And customers has a opportunity to do any custom naming convention, provide if they want to integrate with the ANF as a, a net of files, they can do that as well. And we are doing many, many more uh, automation improvements and we are getting ton of feedback. As I said, this is not built in isolation. That 20% on top of uh, enterprise scale for SAP is from customers and partners feedback. So we rely on that heavily. And thank you so much for providing for us that. And this is available as well. We'll provide the link. I think that that's for me um, really, really fantastic. And I mean, we had Morgan and Kimo already on the show um, a few episodes back where, where Morgan demoed us um, the um, deployment using Terraform and Ansible and um, then really getting the S4 system. But as you said, um, we had internally this this workshop that you conducted where um, I don't know how many people attended in the end, but it was a huge number. And there, there was a nice document. You, you just provide needed to provide a few um, input parameters, and then after a few hours, um, you had your S4 system up and running. Um, yes. So that was really, really amazing. And you, you don't. I mean, yes, obviously you need to provide some input. You need to provide um, uh, what is my Azure subscription and stuff like that. You, you need to provide this information, and then you need to select what kind of SAP system do you want to install. But then you just execute it, and it. After a few uh, hours, it, it's a long runtime to install an SAP. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um. Then it's there. So so it's there. Yeah. And and the, the the fantastic thing it's it's repeatable. So um it's not something that I um open the SAP GUI or the the um software installation manager update manager and do next next finish provide some some inputs there and then I mess it up and I need to go back and whatever. This is really something that is repeatable. I can easily set up hundreds of environments with this and it's, it was really great. And, and not just fast, but basically following the best practices, yes. you know, because typically if you are doing manually, okay, on one hand, yes, it's slower, but it's very error prone because mm -hmm. you, I, we as a humans, we tend to do a, forget something or we're not aware. If you implement the best practices, this is honestly through the experience solving a lot of problems and, and, and future escalation. Just people forget to set something and then afterwards you realize and maybe it's too late or it's you went productive <clears throat> and escalation. So this is always really a, an excellent way, not, not just to speed up as well. Yeah, definitely. 
but also to set up the best practice and in that way you're really uh, avoiding uh, future potential escalation and many of them i've seen uh, they just didn't follow the best practices mm -hmm. you know who would read all those long documentation <laughs> and yeah, yeah. everywhere that's yeah. why we are marrying both right we are providing that documentation as an architect you go ahead and do it <laughs> As an SRE team member or basis team member, you take this automation and get started and jump start. Like that is cool. uh, like end goal. I have one ask uh, for um, all the, anybody would be is that one continue to provide us the feedback and if you have if you are getting journey started on SAP on Azure, please utilize the documentation and if you have a solution architect partner, kindly utilize this. This is where we really want to hear from customers and partners. And okay. we will share these links and there is a feedback as well we are requesting. Yeah, yeah. So we should put this Holger definitely, you know, um, uh, if you have any anything, uh, uh, possibility to directly enter the feedback or request, you know, that would be yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, I will definitely provide that. Yes. Cool. cool. Good. Um, so when, uh, so yeah, I, I know you cannot talk about timelines, but um, so I guess this year we will see these questions and everything. Yes, yes. Um, it's not. I just cannot commit the date because things could just uh, sure. uh, yeah, move. Yeah, yeah. But yes, we are pretty close. I think we are pretty, pretty close. Uh, thank you for actually, first of all, letting us be here. And I think this is the first time we are speaking on it. And I think this is a kickstart for us. And I'm pumped. Yeah. Perfect. You need to deliver it now. Okay. Yes. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> also, also, if, if anyone has, you know, obviously wants to get ahead of this uh, in advance of the official launch of everything, they can always be a little proactive and engage their sales team, account team, cloud solution architects, so on and so forth. Now, and uh, this content will already be in their hands, so they will be able to speak to it. Cool. I mean, we'll provide all the links to to the to the um, sites that are already available. Um, we can also update it later on um, if we have additional links there. So everyone watching this later can hopefully immediately click on the link and uh, get to the yes. content. Good, then I think, thank you so much for, for providing us with this um, update uh, with this uh, news of, of things that will come um, very soon. We're, we're definitely looking forward to this. Um, maybe in, a, in the future we can have you back on the tea, uh, on, on, on the show and then you can provide uh, additional updates, maybe the feedback that you um, incorporated in, in, in the meantime. So I think that was, would be really nice. Oh, thank right. you, actually, Holger and Gordon. Thank you for giving us, uh, Gordon, sorry about that, uh, giving this opportunity for me and Andrew. I think, yeah, this is a really, really great way for us. Yeah, it's a pleasure. I'm looking forward to showing up again with more exciting stuff in the future. Well, Perfect. I'm also well. looking forward to that. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Then thank you very much. Have a nice thank day. You. See you next week, everyone. Bye bye. bye.